When you think of drones, perhaps you think of something like this. Or maybe this. Well, how about this? So this is Ehang's testing headquarters in Guangzhou, and this is their passenger drone that they're developing. The idea is that this could ferry passengers from A to B around the world, and it could even be flying in the skies in the next couple of months. It can go 135 miles an hour for up to 35 kilometers, so you can imagine if it takes off, it could be a pretty quick way to get around. So this is what it looks like inside. You've got a little cockpit that you can climb into, and uh, you can close the door. Right, get yourself nice and cosy and there's even a seat belt this can carry up to 220 kilograms so a couple of passengers and you know it's pretty cozy but if it gets you there quickly that could be all right the whole aviation industry has been uh, you know existed for a century and you know there was nothing fundamental changed in the past one century uh eha as a company we started to think about build up a passenger aircraft you know self-piloting one starting from many years ago. We thought that, is there any alternative? Is, is there any way that we can make a safer, you know, um, aircraft in the future? At the moment, they're working on getting commercial approval to fly flights over the city, but they haven't got that yet. So that has to go up unmanned at the moment. So we'll just have to watch, but we'll have a drop of it like, wow. <laughs> that, is, that is pretty serious. Imagine that flying over your city. You definitely know about it. It's certainly a glimpse into the future, and it could make delivering people and packages very quick indeed. But instead of going physically faster, another way for deliveries to arrive sooner is to store them closer to where they need to go. JD.com, China's second biggest online retailer, has been trying to do just this in Beijing. People in China don't tend to drink a lot of tap water. That means in cities at least, they're probably drinking a lot of bottled water instead. That means they've got to get delivered to their house. And if they're doing that, then it's got to come from a place like this. This is a water station. To get water at the moment, you have to phone one of the many local companies. It's all very manual, can be quite slow. People are no longer satisfied with a 24 hour or even a half day delivery. What they want is a situation where, say, you're making your dinner at home, you need rice or water delivered to your kitchen ASAP, and there it is. JD could be called China's answer to Amazon. It's got big warehouses, but that means they can only be so close to the centre of the city. And that's where the water stations come in. Dotted around Beijing, they essentially act as JD depots in miniature. So now you order water on an app, and JD automatically sends the order through to a water station close to you. It could be one just around the corner, and they say that makes it really quick. So we wanted to see this in action. So our fixer, Yuan, has gone to a house on the other side of town. She's about to put in an order. We're going to chase it and see if it gets there. She's put the order in, so we're just waiting for it to come through. Very exciting. Follow that tuk-tuk. We're here. It took about 20 minutes. Uh, I think that's the fastest it can be. I think it could be anywhere from 20 minutes to a couple of hours, depending on where they are in the city, how busy they are, that sort of thing. But all of this innovation may only be possible because of a unique situation in China. In China, delivery workers often are not contracted, they aren't paid minimum wages or have any kind of social security net. And they're basically earning money on a piecemeal basis of, say, you know, 50 cents uh, for every delivery that they make. Um, that leads to a huge number of precarious workers that really are supplying the uh, foundations of the online economy in China. In developed economies like the UK, where there is minimum wages and wage levels are generally higher, the cut that delivery would take of many services would make them possibly unviable for people to buy. Remember Ehong? They've also been working on a trial to deliver, amongst other things, fast food. So this app actually lets you get things delivered to you by drone. Um, there's a few different options, different people that are offering the service. We'll, we'll get some fast food today and I think we'll order six coffees because there's a few people here. We just need to pick our drone delivery zone. There's only one nearby, which is the one just outside. And if we pay now, we should have some coffee. Touchdown. 
So if I can get into it, this is a coffee that's come from, it looks like McDonald's, so presumably there's a McDonald's somewhere that's got a drone port. Well, it's certainly slightly more complicated than a cafetiere. That's it, back to wherever it came from. I'm not entirely convinced that you want to do it to order a coffee, but you can imagine if you needed an urgent parcel or something like that, that could be pretty helpful. But you don't want that landing in your backyard, do you really? I think drone ports like these make a lot of sense. There's no doubt that what they're doing in delivery here is pretty innovative. But the question is, can the business models that make sense in China still work in other places around the world? In the race to go global, the real challenge could be making sure that regulation and safety come along for the ride.